A couple months ago, a viewer had reached out stating that he wanted to share his product called the Frankenstacks with myself and viewers of the channel. I'm sure like many of you, I was super unfamiliar what it was and truthfully had no idea. But with some quick research, I quickly found out that was a instant film back for the Mamiya RB67, which I do own and was immediately interested in testing it out. So over the past couple weeks, I've been testing it and it's been super intuitive and straightforward so far. Despite there being some setbacks and some slightly confusing metering that can happen during broad daylight, I've gotten some really, really great images on the first handful of weeks with shooting this camera. In terms of shooting, it attaches to the RB without the rotating film back, ensuring focusing is correct and works pretty simply. After attaching it to the RB like you would any other film back, you simply remove the dark slide, meter your scene, focus the shot, take it, advance the next shot, print the photo, and let the magic develop. I recently took it to the photo department lab's grand opening and took some shots there with it. And it was safe to say that it was certainly a neck breaker for other photographers lusting over the powers of instant film with the Mamiya glass. So far, my favorite quality of this whole contraption is the ability to truly control your exposure. With other instant film cameras, you're shooting with a plastic lens at f8 or f16 with pretty much no other control to try to make sure focus is somewhat correct. Whereas with this thing, you can control entirely how the exposure will look, which is great. With that being said, the film is 800 speed film and I'm almost positive I shot every single photo at that. However, because the RB doesn't really have crazy fast shutter speeds, it can be quite tricky to shoot this in broad daylight without much practice. I know I certainly had some issues, but I'm eager to get it out west this summer with some golden hour Rocky Mountain landscape shots to truly put it to the test. As of now, I've mostly shot portraits and lifestyle type photos, but I think it'll do great for anything you can throw at it. The colors I've gotten out of the images too are nothing short of incredible. I've always thought that the Instax instant film colors are way beyond the colors from Polaroid, so to be able to have a reliable way to create sharp, controlled images on that instant film is such a game changer. I think even when out of the shoot, especially for people who aren't well versed in film photography, to pull out the massive RB67 and Frankenstacks back to it that shoots incredible film instantly is mind boggling to normal people to say the least. So let's go check it out in motion and see what the camera looks like when it's in use. I did it again. I shot it with the dark slide in. I literally just edited the part of the video where I said,
So at this point, I was pretty much wrapped up shooting and headed home. The following day, I was headed to a bachelor party, and on the way back, I saw this nice scene of this truck sitting here with this small town garage as its background. I thought with the overcast skies, now would be as good of time as ever to kind of test some exposure to see how big of a difference it would make between one stop over and underexposed. Honestly, I was surprised at the variation between just a single stop, but I guess that's what you're working with when it comes to instant film. One thing that I didn't really get a chance to do that I'm planning on shooting a separate video for is some portraits as I think that would be this thing's strength through and through. So far I've been most impressed with it with low light or interior shots. Some of these I shot of Maddie and the cats just after golden hour in her apartment are slightly underexposed but otherwise handles this fairly dynamic scene quite well. Additionally, being able to shoot at f3.8 creating that crazy depth of field that really is the quote medium format look is another really, really nice feature to chase after, so to speak. As with everything, there's certainly some misses in the shots that I took, especially the ones during broad daylight. I'm still figuring out metering and how to shoot at 800 ISO with only a capped 400 shutter speed. Also, another small thing that I think is kind of a complaint and honestly just me being a straight dumbass is I constantly was accidentally shooting it with the dark side in. So there's probably three or four shots that I completely wasted that are just black because I am a dumbass. But to me, that seems like such a small gripe that you can kind of get over because it's totally your fault when you're uh, shooting with the dark side in so i think that's such a small gripe for all the positives and intricacies that come along with being able to shoot on instant film with a medium format rb67 as of now sam who got into creating these from tinkering with his rb67 himself and eventually bought the original frankensax company which i didn't know existed has been mastering the production of these, creating some of the sleekest and most reliable instant film backs in production today. Right now, he has two available, very affordable packages with a slew of accessories for sale on his site, which is in the description below. I'm super stoked to continue to shoot this back throughout the summer and include it in some photo adventure videos while out exploring and camping in my Forerunner. But ultimately, I want to hear what you guys think of the Frankenstacks from your perspective. Is this something that you'd be interested in? And can you see yourself purchasing it in the future to get those creamy bokeh and medium format looking instant film shots? I know for myself, I've always loved instant film and truly do love shooting like the SX-70 and some of the wider Instax cameras, but, but I've always had problems with metering and honestly just using those cameras because there's such a lack of control in them that interpreting the scene and lighting can be quite difficult. So finally getting a camera that is high quality that you can control your exposure completely to a T is something that I've been looking for for quite a while. And, and it's something that I'm really excited to add to my repertoire of film cameras for out on location shooting. Kind of like I alluded to earlier, being able to shoot an instant print to be able to review or show to whoever's on location with you is something that I think is just timeless and extremely worthwhile. With that being said, if you guys are interested at all or just want to peruse Sam's website, definitely make sure to check that out down below. I think it is really important to make sure we support all these people that are making new or modified film products in the modern era of digital photography, as I think these are the people and these are the companies that are truly caring about the subculture and will be able to bring film out of the ashes like a new phoenix. With our support, we can truly push the needle forward and be a part of a film community for the future that we really want to see. Otherwise, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for more RB67 instant film stuff coming in the future. Otherwise, I post weekly Sundays at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. So stay on the lookout for more film photography videos coming soon. Otherwise, until next time, guys, stay safe, stay shooting. Peace out and adios.